January was a very exciting month for stargazing, people that love the moon. There was all kind of different faces. Also, planet alignments and in February, prime time for astrophotography as we have some very important sky events and also galaxies, star clusters, and deep sky objects and nebulas are right there shining and posing for us. the moon and planets. Let's take a look. February 12th, full moon. The moon will be located on the opposite side of the earth as the sun and its face will be fully illuminated. This phase occurs at 1355 universal time, which is around 8 a.m. Eastern time. Early Native American tribes knew this full moon as the snow moon because the heavy snow usually fell during this time of the year. Also, since hunting was very difficult, some tribes have also known this moon as the hunger moon. January saw an occultation of Mars by the moon, but February brings us a different one. And this one is the Pleiades by the moon. If you live either the Eastern or Central time zones, you'll find the occultation takes place in the early hours of the 6th. This can be a little bit problematic for those in the Eastern time zone, while those in the Central time will find them very low in the Northwest horizon. With the moon 60% illuminated, the chances are it will be too bright to allow observers to see the Pleiades with the naked eye. However, if you're using binoculars, you can try moving the illuminated portion of the moon out of the field of view for a better chance of seeing the clusters, individual stars. February 24th and the 25th, Mercury and Saturn. Having passed the sun early in the month, Mercury quickly climbs into the evening sky. Meanwhile, Saturn has been losing ground to the sun, which means you'll have an opportunity to see them pass one another in the twilight after sunset. Your best opportunity comes on the 24th and the 25th. Step outside at about 15 minutes after the sun goes down and you'll see Venus shining brightly towards the west. Look directly below it and much closer to the horizon and you may see a fainter star with the pinkish white light. This is Mercury. Then look a little bit just to its left side and if you're lucky you may see another star that's even fainter. This is Saturn. On the 24th, Saturn appears just to the upper left of Mercury, while the following night it will appear to the lower left. You'll need a clear view of the western horizons or binoculars can help. This phase happens at 0046 Universal Time, which is around 7.46 p.m. This is the best time of the month to observe faint objects such as galaxies, star clusters, and all kind of this guy objects as there is no moonlight to interfere. Woohoo! There's a couple of galaxies that are shining in the northeast part of the sky, and those are the Boats Galaxy Messier 81 with the magnitude of 6.9. This is a great target also for small telescopes and smart telescopes. And close by is Messier 82, which is the Cigar Galaxy, magnitude 8.0. Also very good uh, for small telescopes and smart telescopes, even though that it's smaller. So you will have to increase your total integration time. And now it's time for the non-popular nebulas and a little bit more challenging to find and to capture. Let's take a look at some of them that are there in the February night sky. NGC 2467, popularly known as the Skull and Crossbones Nebula, is an active star-forming region in the constellation Puppis. The presence of large hydrogen gas clouds is the key ingredient required for the creation of new stars. Located some 13,000 to 17,000 light years away in the southern constellation of Puppis, 
It is a highly active stellar nursery where new stars are born from large clouds of dust and gas. NGC 2467 is located in an area of special interest in the third quadrant of the Milky Way known as Puppy's Window. It has a magnitude of 7.10. This is a tough one. It requires a lot more of image integration, many hours, and also bigger telescopes. The Penguin and Egg Nebula. The Porpoise Galaxy NGC 2936 is an irregular galaxy located in the constellation Hydra. It is also known as the Penguin Galaxy. The interacting galaxy lies at a distance of 352 million light years away from the sun. How can we even visualize this? And has an apparent magnitude of 12.85. This is a tougher uh, galaxy to capture. The neighbor NGC 2937, which is the egg, contains very little dust and gas and its stars are mostly old. Keep me posted if you capture one of them. I am planning to do an imaging session using my new telescope Celestron Rasa 11. Oh yeah! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did so please don't forget to subscribe and click like. Also leave your comments. I love to uh, interact with all of you and read your comments. Keep me posted if you capture any of these uh, nebulas or galaxies. I'll see you on March 1st for the next next episode of Hidden Treasures of the Universe.